What's up? This is Kong from xfaders.com and I want to walk you through and help you set up scenes and sources in OBS to record or stream your DJ sets. Now, this video is primarily for the beginners, but I hope that seasoned vets will be able to find some good information, especially in the tips and tricks section. We got a lot of content to cover, so go ahead and queue up this video on a second device and let's walk through how to build your DJ canvas. One of the first topics I would like to cover first is the camera. Now, take a moment and look around, see if you can find a camera that's not in use. Now, whether that is a webcam, an old cell phone, or a DSLR, or a pro mirrorless, any of these devices will work great when starting your YouTube channel or your streaming channel. On screen at the moment is a live shot from the Logitech C920, which is a 1080p webcam, and it is less than $100 at the moment. There's a couple other ones to choose from, but this is the one that I'm using in this particular shot. Let's say you don't have a webcam lying around to use. You can also use your cell phone, whether it be an Apple device or an Android device. On screen at the moment is a live shot of my Galaxy Note 9 um, streaming through my PC. Now you do have the option with this software called Droid Cam X to be able to do, do Wi-Fi or USB. Um, I would suggest using a USB option. And even if you're using an iPhone, I would definitely suggest using a cable as well. But I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find any of the software that'll allow you to do this. Quick disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by or affiliated with Droid Cam X. This was just an application I found that seemed to work pretty good when I did a basic app store search for um, streaming software for your, uh, for your phone. For this next shot, this will be my primary setup. So I was fortunate to have a couple cameras lying around because I have a photo booth, but on this setup, I'm using a Canon EOS uh, M50 along with a uh, newer LED USB light. Um, I have those both attached to a monitor pole um, and they're being held on with the Manfrotto uh, camera arm. So as you can see here, I have the camera on one level and then I have the lighting on the second level. Um, one of the most important things when taking these shots is to make sure that you have ample lighting. So as you can see here, one of my soft boxes over there in the corner and I also have another soft box set up on the side. If I'm not mistaken, I have um, 450 watt lights inside of each one of them to give me enough light. The camera is currently set up for 1080p. I'm using a kit lens, which is 15 to 45. As you'll see in some of the shots, it is a little tight. Um, I tried my Sigma um, wide angle lens, which was able to cover down, but I was just concerned about the weight of the lens in the downward position. So I stuck with the kit lens for the moment, but I hope to explore other options later. I'm also using an Elgato capture card, um, specifically the HD60S. The reason for that is because the uh, Canon software, the webcam Canon software, um, has restrictions as far as the resolution. So to keep the best quality possible, I went with a capture card um, HDMI out from the camera itself. My primary DVS software is going to be Serato, but this idea, this concept should work the same with Virtual DJ. And as you can see on screen here, I just use the uh, the screen capture for Virtual DJ on top of the SX3. And if you happen to have Pioneer Rekordbox, now of course the SX3 does not work with Rekordbox, but I just wanted to give you a screenshot on how you can apply these concepts as well to that software. And last but not least for my Tractor fans out there, um, if you're still using Tractor DJ Pro, um, then you still have an option to follow these steps to be able to screen capture your Tractor uh, software and add it onto your shot. Now the SX3 has not been mapped, but I at least wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. So with that all out of the way, let's talk about OBS. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to download the software. Um, it is free software, but it'll definitely uh, serve its purpose and does a great job doing so. I want to refrain from getting super technical with this. I just want to get you started with the process. And if we need to cover some more topics later in other videos, I'll definitely do so. But hopefully this will get you started with the process. Now, the idea is to keep things as clean as possible. So any opportunity that you should have to rename your titles, definitely do so. So in this section here, we're going to go ahead and add a source, which is the Canon M50. Now, in my case, it actually shows up as the Elgato capture card because I'm running it through the HDMI port. So once you select that, go ahead and hit OK. 
and you'll see your capture show up on the screen. Now the next thing to do, which is very important, is to make sure your shot is in focus. So using the uh, M50, what I needed to do was open up the window and zoom in on it to ensure that everything's in focus. I grabbed some of my artwork for the demonstration. So let me know in the comment section if you recognize this uh, art and which movie it came from and what scene. But I set it up just with a, a DMX fixture or PAR fixture, um, just lighting it up with different colors just so you can see it. On screen at the moment, I have a capture from three different devices. So in the top left, it is the Logitech uh, C920. Below that is my webcam, my Droid Android webcam. And over there to the right is my Canon uh, 80D. Once you specify the source in OBS, you can click configure video. It'll bring up another window with some additional options. What's important in this section here is that you take a look at the uh, focus and exposure and make sure you turn them off auto. Um, this will allow you to, to set your focus manually as well as exposure. Just the same for the Droidcam software, you wanna go in and uh, open up the advanced settings and configure it so that the exposure is locked as well as uh, setting it manually. Uh, make sure you turn off autofocus as well too. Now, when we move over to the ADD, I can add a little bit more context to this, but as far as these, this is just showing you how the options are available on those items. Now for the ADD, notice it's set to manual mode. So once it's locked in focus, uh, just switch to manual mode and lock those items in. Also the ISO or ISO is set to 800. Um, if you notice in the bottom right hand corner, the histogram there is showing variations of brightness. And this is what the concern is because it'll be very distracting in your video if the lighting is changing. So for example, I'll set the AD to auto and notice how the ISO changes from 400 and then it switches to 500, 600, 800 because it's adjusting for the light or compensating for the light. So setting that manually will prevent any distractions and, and variations of your, your shots. So it's important that you do this on any of your inputs. Now, of course, looking at the shot, everything is uh, upside down. So the first thing I'll need to do is rotate this 180 degrees. And as you can see here, I forgot to turn on my top light. So I went ahead and powered that on and you can see that the, the shot has become brighter and clearer. So what you'll do is go down to the, the source, right click, go to transform and then rotate 180 degrees. So now that you have it in the correct orientation, you can just look over your shot, make sure everything's clean, get everything out of the way that's not necessary. And now it's time to go ahead and add in your DVS application. So go to add another source, a window capture. Once you select it, go ahead and name it to the software so you can keep everything uh, titled properly. And once the window comes open, just go ahead and select, in my case, Serato. And what I do is I turn off capture cursor just so it won't appear in the, the shot at all. So make sure your software is also in full screen. That's going to help you out. Now with Serato and, and as well with the other DVS software, you have the option to change the view. Um, this is important when you're choosing your layout and how you want your, your application to appear on your canvas. So you have a couple of options here, which is vertical uh, with the waveforms going up. Uh, next option is horizontal, which is pretty good um, when you just need a basic layout. Um, the one that I use uh, the most is extended because it gives me the most uh, options. Um, there's stack where the waveforms are stacked on top of each other. And last but not least for the library view. So this is good when you want to showcase the music that you have, or you want to showcase your, your crate. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it back to extended. And if you notice, I also labeled that um, title as EXT, just to link the two together. So I know for this one to work, it needs to be on extended uh, view in my DVS software in Serato. 
So now that we have that all set up, we're gonna switch back to OBS. And as you can see here, we can uh, see the Serato screen capture up here on the screen, but it's actually on top of the, the uh, camera shot. So we'll have to do some adjustments to that layer. Uh, specifically, when you go inside of the scene section, if you look at the orientation, it's actually sitting on top of the camera. So that will make complete sense on why we're not able to see the camera anymore. But you have a few options though. The first one is if you go inside of filters, you can actually add a crop to it. So this is one way of doing it. Um, there are times where it, it will be better, but um, all you have to do is, is simply type in the number on how much you wanna crop. Um, so it will take a little bit of fiddling around, but you'll be able to get it right. Also make sure relative mode is turned on so um, it will constantly adjust to the size of the, uh, the window. Um, the way that I found to be easier is if you hold the alt key on your keyboard and just drag up. So simply just hold alt, drag up to the point where you want it to um, crop out. So the same thing applies for the top bar. I don't need anything at the very top, so I'll just crop that out. So at the very top, there's a little bit of a gap. So what I did is just shifted the image up. But in the case that you need to make some adjustments as far as the size, you can always hold the shift key and grab one of the corners and resize as you see fit. Um, be careful not to distort the image. Uh, I don't want anything to look crazy when I'm, when I'm uh, displaying it. But just if you need to make small adjustments or a little bit of a gap space, uh, feel free to do so. So this part is gonna be a little fun. You can add a little bit of creativity to your, your canvas. Um, now, whether you just want to make uh, color corrections to the the camera or Serato, um, but what you're able to do is if you go to filters and select color correction, you can make changes to the brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, all those things, opacity. But one of the cool things you can also do is do some changes to the uh, saturation and hue. Now to better explain this, I place a chart on screen at the moment. So it's basically the color wheel along with the degrees of a circle. So as you can see here, I chose the primary color in the waveforms, which is pink. So making changes to the saturation, you can see here, um, it does change the colors quite a bit, whether it be richer or desaturated. But then the cool thing about it is when you start making adjustments to the hue, um, when you look at this circle, um, it's, it has degrees along the outside. So if you start with your starting color and move up 30 degrees or move uh, back 30 degrees, you'll see how the wheel rotates around along with it to reveal what color everything would change into. So for example, like I said, it starts with pink, but if you move about 30 degrees back, you'll run into a purple. Now, if you look at the Serato overlay, you'll notice that the colors are uh, different from the original, and that's what the hue does for you. But now that you have that all set up, it's time to uh, look at your shot and make any final adjustments. As you can see here, the, the rain uh, mixer is not centered properly. So I'll take a moment here to try and recenter all the, uh, the, the DJing equipment. Now, bear in mind, the uh, wide angle lenses have a tendency to distort. So although you can try and line it up as best as possible, it, it probably won't be perfect. But with all that being said, if you made it this far, you're doing pretty good. You're almost done. So at this point, it's time to add in your audio. So you'll go back to the source section and go ahead and add another source. Once you click on it, go ahead and select audio output capture. And make sure you rename it as we've been doing throughout the video. And now it's time to select your input. So when it comes to Serato and Serato Lite, they have different ways of implementing audio. So with Serato DJ Pro, um, you have the option of a virtual cable as well as desktop audio. So in my case, because I'm using Serato DJ Pro, I will choose the virtual audio cable. And I'll show you how to enable it in Serato. So once we switch back to the Serato application, go ahead and click the preferences or settings. And under the audio tab, make sure you check the box for virtual cable at the bottom. 
Now you will need to download the software and install it. But once you do that, that, that button or that checkbox will become available for you to check. If you haven't done it, then it'll take you to the link to um, install the software down at the bottom, highlighted in blue. Now, when it comes to uh, Serato Lite, they only give you the option to use your speakers, your desktop speakers. So one of the things I would suggest to do is to go down to your uh, speaker settings. And if you go inside of that, uh, the mixer window, you'll have the option for system sounds. You need to turn this off, turn it down, or just simply mute it. Um, another option that you have is if you go inside of the actual sounds control panel, you can just disable all um, sounds completely from windows. So you would hit the drop down and just hit no sounds. What this does for you is prevents any of the, the built-in desktop sounds from destroying your audio in your set. So for example, you'll hear this or this one right in the middle of your set. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and turn those options off completely. or alternatively, you can just mute them. One other option I forgot to mention is uh, you need to disable the audio on your capture device. So for my Canon M50, you can mute the audio within OBS or just turn it down, or you can disable it from the camera. Before we go any further, I would definitely wanna give a shout out to DJ Jorge Blanco. He hooked me up with these Timeco vinyl from uh, Third Rumble. And I definitely wanted to give him a shout out. And also, if you have a moment, check out his Twitch page and give him a follow. Now, I know this video has went a little long and I appreciate you for staying with me uh, watching it all the way through. Now, what I'll do is a follow up video with some of the tips and tricks that uh, I've learned and, and sort of show you some of the, the things you can do with OBS to enhance your uh, canvas as well as your DJ set. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you again for checking out this video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check out the website at www.xfaders.com.